you know, so she told me that, yeah, it was some church spiritual mother that came and do this. And as I, you know, asked more questions, I found out that mother was into Santeria, mm -hmm. you know. So detection is one of the ways you know the need for this thing. So as you, uh, um, so detection is one thing. And then experiences too. You have strange dreams, mm -hmm. you know, cobwebs in your dreams. You know, you, you always find that you never finish anything you start in your dream. Maybe you are taking an exam, you never finish it. You're going somewhere. Before you get to your destination, something will happen where you're not getting to that destination. Those are indicators that there's some kind of spiritual attack against your life. Okay. Now, when you pray now, you don't just pray, Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your will be done. That's not how to fight. Okay. When you pray now, you need to pray specific prayers now. You need to say, okay, any attack, any witchcraft attack against me, I cancel it. Whatever they have set in my way to hinder me, I break it. You know, so you have to be very targeted and specific okay. in warfare prayer. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's say, let's say someone is dealing with uh, alcoholism. So they're mm -hmm. dealing with alcohol. It's generational. Their father did it, and their father did it, and their father did it. How would we begin to break that process off of someone's life right now? Okay, well, since we already know it's generational, and you know, for, for those who are watching us, I you know, like to let you know that when you see a generational trend in your life, mm -hmm. then that means that there's a familiar spirit in the family that continues to you know, enforce that curse you know, that's mm -hmm. been passed down through the generational line. So you need to want to repent, you need to pray, a prayer of repentance on behalf of your grandfather or whoever started this, you need to pray and cancel any agreements. Because in some cases, the reason why this thing keeps on passing down the generational line is that there's an agreement that's been made. It could be by, you know, great grandparent mm. that said, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm sick. They went to a, a root worker or something or a witchcraft, you know, practitioner and said, hey, I'm sick. I need help. I said, no problem. I will help you. But you know what, as a result of helping you, now there's going to be alcoholism in your family. They actually make an agreement, make deal. you know. So, and, and you know, the kids will be wondering why is everybody seem to be, you know, played by this? Mm. Well, you need to repent on their behalf. You need to break any standing agreement, any standing covenant, mm. any dedication. And then you need to command the spirit, the family spirit to live your life in the name of Jesus. And as you do that, then you'll be able to be free. I've gone through a similar process as that. Uh, I went through a deliverance uh, when, when I was younger and uh, found out that on my family line there was a spirit of poverty. My God. So through the spirit of poverty came because uh, someone probably five or six generations ago lost a child, mm -hmm. blamed God for that, Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, through that process and the words they said, a uh, spirit of poverty came in uh, to my family line. Wow. So I, and then going through the, um, the deliverance process, I renounced um, uh, that. Yes. Um, I forgave the people that made that curse come on my, on my line. And then I went in and, uh, uh, you know, broke that curse off there through that process. That's right. You know, but we have to, you have to also forgive the people that cause that That's right. to happen as part of the process. That's right. That's right. And it's important because many people have unbroken curses still in their life. Mm -hmm. They just thought, that, oh, once you're saved, you know, it's mm -hmm. automatically, mm -hmm. automatically broken. But that's not true. Mm -hmm. You have to now go through that process mm -hmm. to break it so that you can be free. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think, if, I think if everything was broken off of you at one time, uh, you wouldn't know what to do. That's right. You know, I mean, we, we, we are a lifetime of experiences and uh, things that have happened to us. That's right. Uh, and if everything was completely stripped away, we would no longer know who we were. That's right. You know, I that's think right. that's why where it says in the Bible that we're, that, that if a spirit is, is cast out that's right. and, it, and he's not cleaned out and completely dealt with, he'll bring seven more with him. That's great. You know, that's so if, I think if God, God does us a favor by not completely cleaning us from day one. That's right. You know. It's a, it's a walk-in process. If we did it one time and we weren't ready and we went through, the, went through and uh, didn't deal with and, and fill our lives with Him and get all those areas covered at that one time, then everything that left would have a right to bring seven buddies with it. That's right. So let's say you had like three. You got 21 now to come in and torment and you're bothering you at this point. That's right. No, That's right. no one wants that. And God doesn't want that for us. No, He doesn't. You know, <clears throat> there's something that's coming to mind. One of the things I usually tell you know, uh, you know, people that come to me in New York and mm -hmm. they say they, they need prayer. 
uh, you know, and I will ask them, okay, have you been through the deliverance? Have, have, been, have you, you know, has anyone pray over you for deliverance? And they say yes. And, but you see, most people don't know what that deliverance really means. Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, so when, where, where, how, and okay, yeah, they call me out in front of the church, you know, mm -hmm. when they had a prayer line and, you know, spend, you know, two, three minutes, you know, with me and, and yeah, that's deliverance. I say, no, that's not deliverance. Mm -hmm. Because really for me, it, thorough deliverance, again, when you go down on your knees and you're scraping each one of those gums thing, mm -hmm. You don't do that in two minutes. No. <laughs> no, no. You don't do that in two minutes. You don't do that in that quick session that you have in front of everybody in the congregation. Mm -hmm. it, it takes more than that. It takes more. finding out about that person, mm -hmm. about their foundation, mm -hmm. their generations, a, about where they have been to, what they have gotten in, mm -hmm. into, psychics they've gone to, and therefore bring curses into their life. Mm -hmm. Finding out those things, yeah. and then specifically breaking off those things. Mm -hmm. So many people say, think that they've been delivered, mm -hmm. when in reality, they have not. Yeah, it's just funny you said that. Uh, when I went through my deliverance process, it was probably about 20 plus hours. The, wow. I mean, it, it was not a, a short little little deal. It was it was long, and, and it was a dedication of an entire day of just we're going to deal with these things, and we're going to get rid of them, and we're going to be who God intended us to be through this process. But through that, uh, I, I went to a, a, an art museum, and someone that worked at the art museum just grabbed my hand. I mean, yes. I'm, I'm probably about 17, 18 years old. Just grabbed my hand and just started reading my palm. Now, I did not invite that. I didn't say, hey, read my palm. This they way. just grabbed my hand, looked at my lines. Oh, you're going to have a short life speaking death over me because Jesus. of the lines they saw over me. So through that deliverance process, I had to renounce and forgive the person for speaking death over me. That's right. But I never invited that in. That's right. So not everything that we're dealing with is necessarily generational That's right. or it's things that we've personally invited in. It's something that we were at the, a place and someone was there with an assignment on the other side. Mm -hmm. to, to slip us up and trip us up and prevent us from becoming what God intends for us. Because that's the enemy's whole purpose. That, that's right. You know, talking about what, what might have been done on your behalf or something you didn't particularly invite. You have parents, for example, or even grandparents who uh, they just want their kids to do well. They want their grandkids to do well. Mm -hmm. They don't know God. They go to, to the ocean mm -hmm. and somebody told them, okay, no problem. Bring the pictures of your grandkids. You know, we're going to say a special prayer for them and come and do some sacrifice on their behalf. Now, their grandkids don't know anything about oh, no. this. But here's this grandma doing this, going to the ocean. They may say, okay, you have to get naked and, and you know, wash yourself and, you know, put this thing together, throw it in the ocean, put their picture there, throw it in there, and, you know, uh, you, you are bringing good luck into their life. No. They've just done stuff to bring blockage yes. into the life of that kid. Now, the kid grows up and wonder why all this block in their life, not knowing that stuff has been done on their behalf. Exactly. Demons have been sent into their life. Spirits have been sent to, quote unquote, protect them when in reality, the spirits the spirit are just going to mess you up. Oh, yeah. Anytime you deal with demonic spirit, they will mess you up. Whether it's the spirit of the dead, your mom that's been dead for so many mm -hmm. years that they say is coming back to you, it's a lie. It's familiar spirit. And they have no good intention. Mm -hmm. Demonic spirits have no, nothing good to offer. It's always evil. So, you know, so some of the things people go through is because somebody else did something mm -hmm. and it's standing yeah yeah well a lot of times too it's like everything that the enemy does it's a perversion of what god has like what you were saying earlier they dress in white that's right or they do the cross it's a perversion they're taking something that god has done and set up and established and they're perverting it that's right and in that perverting process uh it looks like you get power it looks like you have that authority it looks like you get that thing uh, that God has for you because maybe it lines up with a word someone has given you in the past that is intended what God has for you. But I've always found that anytime you have a word or you're battling with the word, that's that right. you have to try it and make sure that's right. Because the enemy will always send a counterfeit before that's God right. sends what he has for you. He'll that's always right. try to trip you up. Always, always, always. You know, we, we started out about this warfare prayer, and I want to kind of visit that a, a little more. In the Lord's Prayer, mm -hmm. one of the things Jesus said was, you know, uh, deliver us from evil. Mm -hmm. So even in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus recognized the fact that there is evil mm -hmm. and there's a need for deliverance, mm -hmm. you know, by, by saying deliver us from evil. And the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 
that we rest not against flesh and blood, but mm -hmm. against principalities, against powers, against spiritual weakness in high places. We are so used to the natural realm, to the physical realm. Mm -hmm. When we went to school, everything was about the physical realm. Mm -hmm. When we took science, everything mm -hmm. was about the physical realm. Mm -hmm. So we are not trained on the spiritual realm. So what happens is many of us believers, we don't understand what's going on in the spirit realm. Mm. But the reality is that the spirit realm is more real than the physical realm. Mm. And a lot happens there. I have thoughts on, for example, spiritual cages. There are people whose areas of their lives have been caged up. Mm. Um, somebody did some kind of witchcraft and caged up, let's say, their certificate from school. Mm. They graduated from school, but their certificate have been caged. So they they're not able to get a job with that certificate. Okay, gotcha. Because in the spirit realm, somebody literally in the spirit realm now took their certificate or some representation of their certificate, cage it up. Mm. It could be their marriage, their ability to get married. So some people, they desire to get married, but nobody's coming. Mm. Well, their ability to get married might have been caged up. Mm. Um, and very various areas of lives that can be caged up. Ministry can be caged up. Mm -hmm. uh, finances can be caged up. And you wonder what's going on. Now, in warfare prayer now, you destroy the cage. Okay. You, you command every cage working against my life. Any cage that has been used to, to trap up anything that belongs to me, I command that cage to break. Now, you see, with warfare prayer, you are specific and direct. Okay. Targeted prayer. You're not just saying, Lord, help me. Lord help me. <laughs> well, help you to do what? <laughs> you know? mm. So you have to be very specific. I break up the cage. And obviously, the more you know about how the kingdom of darkness works or their devices, mm. the more you know how to pray. They have spiritual courts. They actually have, just like we have the court system mm -hmm. here, yes. there are court systems in the demonic world too, where just because somebody is jealous that you got a promotion or your job, and that person, you know, that fellow co-worker, um, you know, maybe is into witchcraft, then takes your name to their coven and said, hey, this person got the promotion and I'm not happy. That is the offense. Mm. The fact that they got blessed, gotcha. that is an offense. In the demonic kingdom, you don't have to actually do anything really evil yeah. to offend them. Yeah. Just do good. Yeah. You're offensive already. Yeah. So, and they take your name now to that demonic world and say, okay, Okay, what well, is the sentence? And they have judges, they have prosecutors in, in the dark kingdom, and they say, okay, what's the sentence? Okay, the sentence is, let him lose his job. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, all this stuff, crazy stuff is happening on you, mm -hmm. with you on your job. Well, you need to pray and break that and say, I cancel every verdict from the spiritual court. I cancel every, every sentencing against my life, every standing sentencing against my life. I, I, I cancel that in the name of Jesus. Okay. Well, I hope you've learned something today from uh, from our teachings from Pastor Femi. And I'm blown away. I don't know about you. I mean, I've been through deliverance. I've been through some of the things that, he, that you're talking about. That's but right. a lot of the things, uh, like the cages, I had no idea about the cages. And, and I hope those of you are watching are, are learning and, and putting, and I had no ideas about the courts. I knew that God had a court and the enemy could come in and ask, can I try and test your people yeah. in the court? But I didn't know they had their own court system. I mean, I'm, I'm learning a lot today. So I hope you're learning uh, as well. well. Go ahead and go to your phone right now. Call. Uh, we have prayer partners standing by to pray with you. Uh, and we just want to uh, encourage you to continue to keep watching and, and continue to think about the way you pray and be very specific in your prayers when we That's do right. spiritual warfare. Well, it's time to pray and we'll see you tomorrow.